Hello again, I am Blunty. Can we have a frank and honest chat about LEGO Set 40516, the so-called Everything is Awesome set. It has just been announced and with June approaching and the fact that the set is full of rainbow colors and people of all those different rainbow colors, it's obviously a piece of LGBTQIA propaganda. And predictably enough, this has triggered all the uh, people who love to call other people snowflakes for getting triggered about stuff. What are you going to do? It's the world we live in. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a little bit of a talk about this and why this reaction from, you know, the right leaning, the, 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 the um, friends of Hitler. I don't know what else you would call them. Um, people. Because they are people, aren't we all? Which is kind of the point. So, Lego have just announced this new set. It's called the Everyone is Awesome set, in, in kind of a tribute to Everything is Awesome, the, the wonderful theme song from the, the Lego movie that we all couldn't get out of our heads and can't currently get out of our heads because I've just said it, and now all you're thinking of is that little rhythm. Na -na 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 -na. And while nothing about the promotion, marketing, even the entire webpage about this product itself explicitly says... LGBTQIA plus at all. It just says every every everyone is awesome, acceptance, hooray, and all that kind of stuff. But if you drill down through the page, you do eventually get to a page where it is explicitly stated that it is about LGBTQIA issues and was in fact designed by a member of the LGBTQIA community. Uh, and he uh, you know, has a little blog post about why he thought felt it was important and, and you know his his thoughts and uh, behind the design and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's hardly unusual, at least in recent years, uh, for larger brands to do some sort of stunt product or stunt advertising at the very least, or maybe just some words in, in rainbow font on a black background on their Twitter post or Facebook or something in, you know, recognition, if not full on actual support of June, which is Pride Month. And as happens in and around every Pride Month every June uh, in recent years, whenever any of these companies say, do, or even post an image with a, with a rainbow on it or, or change their logo to rainbow colors for that month or something, you get all these uh, friends of Hitler um, getting really angry about it, about, about woke culture and, and how it's time to abandon their product and never buy them again. And, you know, it's, it's just bluster, really. So I picked a few representative samples that I wanted to look at in today's video and kind of mock and pick apart because they are ridiculous people saying ridiculous things. <clears throat> First one starts. Never thought I'd see the day when Logo Group went woke. It is sad and pathetic, in all caps pathetic, that you are pandering to a small niche of American society while simultaneously alienating your company's biggest supporters, the traditional American family. The kind that makes babies, not adopts. So there's a few horrific things that this person is saying. Um, first off, pandering to a small niche of American society. Very, very American attitude, by the way, to think that your society is the only society that matters for a start, or that, you know, uh, queer people exist in. Don't want to wreck the rest of the world for you, even though as the kind of American who would say this kind of stuff about your home country, you're unlikely to ever go anywhere else, visit other cultures, or learn anything about the rest of the world. But there are gay people everywhere. They're everywhere. Run. Secondly, Lego is not even an American company. They're Danish. So next comes the assumption that the only valid family unit is, of course, the traditional family unit of a manly man and a womanly woman who stays at home in the kitchen and just makes babies. And, and the only valid way to have a family is to give birth to a child and adoption is some sort of sin, apparently which is kind of a horrific thing to say in and of itself, even outside of any of the issues about whether or not gay couples should be allowed to adopt. Just, just, just saying that adoption is, is not a real family. 
it's not valid that adopted kids shouldn't be allowed to play with Lego. Is is that your is that your point? More brainwashing of children as Lego goes woke. And these 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 people love the word woke, don't they? They just love it. Uh, so there's a bit to break down. I mean, it's just one statement, but there's a whole lot to break down in this one too. Firstly, this set is clearly not designed for children. Number one, they've put a little 18 plus uh, age rating on it, which isn't to say that it's inappropriate content for children. It's just something Lego have been doing for certain sets that are more designed for what uh, we in the Lego community call AFOLs, adult fans of Lego. AFOL. It's been a thing for decades, that little term, within, within the Lego community, within the lovers of Lego. Those of us who never grow out of our love of Lego and continue to play and build and, and just enjoy Lego in general as adults or AFOLs. So for a start, nobody's trying to brainwash children. Secondly, letting children know that queer people exist is not really brainwashing. It's just knowledge of things that are, exist in, in the world, which sure, I guess for certain conservatives can be seen as uh, propaganda. Or, or, or brainwashing because, well, they don't want their kids learning stuff because children are easy to control and manipulate if they're dumb, like conservative people like their other people to be. Secondly, Lego isn't going woke. Lego has always been woke. Even in the earliest marketing materials for Lego, like I'm talking materials before I was born. Gray hair, gray beard, 43 years old, right here. Playing with Legos for literally as long as I can remember. But there are marketing materials out that existed in the early 70s, before I was even born, that exposit this, this wokeness, if you will. That, you know, gender binaries aren't the be all and end all when it comes to how children get to play with things. There is this, this wonderful old advertisement that, you know, people love to share because it exposits this point. It's of a girl. She's referred to as a she in the advertisement, but from, you know, that initial opening paragraph only, it just talks about children, not boys, not girls, just children. Uh, and the girl in the ad is not presented as particularly girly. She hasn't built like a, a stove or, or a frying pan or, or a high chair for her doll or something. She just built this wonderful blob of thing. And the whole advertisement is about, well, some children like to build spaceships and some children like to build dollhouses and some children build these monstrosities. And whatever they do, it's beautiful because it's creative, it's expressive, it's them. Just, just learning about the process of creativity and building something. And and and, and that, 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 that act is beautiful in and of itself. And it doesn't matter how girly it is, how, how boyish it is. It doesn't matter if it's pink or blue, or we're gonna circle back to that in a second, but it's, it's Legos for any kid. For a fuck's sake, what's next? That's a statement or question mark, it's just what's next? Let kids be kids and not let them worry about fucking rainbows. LGBTQ, Lego, rainbow, woke, binary, non-binary, Lego launches LBGBQ, everyone is awesome, rainbow set. Again, not a set designed for kids. It's clearly designed for adult fans of Lego. Uh, and beyond the age restriction stuff I was just talking about, this is obviously designed for adults because it is a display set. There is no play value here. In the sets that Lego make specifically for children, there's play value. There's activities. There's it's a set and characters, and you play and 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 you know you role play and you act things out and you have your little adventures and do what kids do with toys. And then you've got the stuff like the this, for example, or the recreation of the Friends set that was released uh, recently, uh, which I'm still thinking quite heavily about buying because I I am a fan of Friends. You know that stuff is for the adults. Those are wonderful little detailed display pieces. They don't have any play value. They're meant to be built, enjoyed, put on the shelf somewhere and, and enjoyed as a, as a thing. They are kitsch. They are decoration. They are knickknacks, for, for want of a better word, I suppose. And I, for one, definitely will be buying one of these Everyone is Awesome sets and I'll put it on the shelf back here somewhere probably so it's always in a video. Although I might have to light it a bit differently because the colored lights there will wash out most of the colors because, well, that's how color science and cameras work. So I'll have to think about that. Maybe I'll build some special 
LED stage lighting for it, like miniature stage lighting. Like you're surprised I'm a nerd. Here's another one, and this is from an account that proposes to be uh, transgender friendly, but it's one of those hate groups that are masking themselves as a transgender activist group to push a hateful agenda. Uh, um, we're not, we won't dig into that, but it's nefarious and insidious and disgusting. But here's what they have to say about the Lego set. Uh, Lego joins the campaign to attract children, again, not for children, how many times do I have to say it, uh, from the earliest age to the LGBTQ plus rainbow family with pastel pink and blue and rainbow colours, no definition is given for the Q plus, and its association with the queer theory, fetish, kink, and BDSM. I think they might be projecting a little bit there. Here's another little secret about the queer community. It's not just them that have kinks and, and, and fetishes, and uh, uh, some might be into BDSM. Lots and lots of straight folk have that stuff as well, by the way. Again, I don't want to shatter the, the view you seem to have of the world here, but straight people are entirely capable of having kinks. In fact, straight people might be a little more likely to have kinks because, well, statistically, there's more straight people in the world for a start. So statistically, there's more straight people with kinks out there. Uh, and also, a proportion of straight people are a little bit repressed because of the society we live in and expectations thrust upon us by people with these kind of viewpoints. And men should be this way and women should be this way and sex should be this way. Uh, and so, you know, whatever's inside them that sort of wants to break free of those restrictive, you know, rules sometimes expresses itself in kinks or BDSM, which is, I guess, another subsection of kinks, but, uh, or, or, you know, fetishes, different words for, for all this different stuff. But I promise you, lots of straight people have kinks, some of them quite kinky. This one is from a man of the church, a pastor, no less, according to his profile. I know the world will be the world, but it's still disappointing. My son and I love Legos. No, you don't. If you actually loved Lego, you would know that Legos, with the S on the end, is not the appropriate way to refer to Lego. The proper official and expected way to refer to multiple Lego is Lego bricks or Lego sets. It's like saying Ford's truck when you're trying to talk about more than one truck. You know, it's Ford trucks, not Fords, Ford trucks. So ha, got you there. You, you don't actually love Lego at all. You don't even understand Lego. You're a poser. You're a Lego poser. Broad. Now I have to have my guard up that it might be a vehicle for LGBT propaganda. Once again, not really marketed towards kids because there's no play value here. Again, it's not propaganda. It's just going, hey, gay people exist. I want to read for you now a letter that was included in Lego sets in an era, again, before I was born, before I even existed on this planet. This was a thing that Lego wanted to tell parents of children who wanted to play with Lego. The urge to create is equally strong in all children boys and girls. It's imagination that counts, not skill. You build whatever comes to your head the way you want it. A bed or a truck, a doll's house or a spaceship. Lots of boys like doll houses. They're more human than spaceships. A lot of girls prefer spaceships. They're more exciting than doll's houses. The most important thing is to put the right material in their hands and let them create whatever appeals to them. So, people who are angry about Lego going woke, number one, they haven't gone woke, they've always been woke. Uh, number two, they've got, they're under an obligation to represent your conservative American family values because, well, they're not American or conservative, they're Danish. Uh, and I don't know if you know much about the Danes, but... Meh. Number three, it sounds like you are the one trying to force propaganda upon your children telling them that this is the way to be a boy. You, you're not allowed to do this if you're a boy, and if you, and only girls do this. That's, that's brainwashing. That's propaganda. What you're doing, what all the rest of us are doing, and saying, hey, just, just 
about let people be people. That's uh, that's the complete opposite of brainwashing uh, and propaganda. That's called acceptance and, and freedom uh, uh, and self-expression. But it doesn't even stop there because some woke people have, uh, <laughs> have found a way to be offended by this set all the same because, well, there's extremes on both ends of the spectrum. There's extreme conservatives and there's extreme wokey people. I don't know what to call them. Uh, but I've seen some complaints and I don't know how serious they're being or if they're just trying to be funny about it. It's hard to pick up on tone just from a tweet or whatever, but I've seen a couple of complaints that seem to be coming from a serious place about how mildly offensive it is that the pink minifigure happens to be a girl and the blue minifigure happens to be a boy and they're reinforcing the gender stereotype that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. And what I have to say to that is there's no uh, gender identification of those figures at all. They don't even have faces, like some Lego faces have. Some just have the smiley mouth and some have the lipstick. And obviously the ones with the lipsticks are the girls, because only girls wear lipstick. Um, but they don't even have that. They're just monotone colors. They're blocks of color. They're a shape of color. So the only identifier they're working from to say, well, the blue one is a boy, is the hair. Which I would suggest is sexist in its own right, saying that women aren't allowed to have short cropped hair? I don't know about you, but I've known quite a few women in my lifespan that wear their hair quite short and look hell cute while doing it. I've known blokes with long, I used to have long hair. I used to have a ponytail. Like pre-YouTube days. I think by the time I started getting in front of a camera, I'd already chopped it off. Man, my hair used to be halfway down my back. I used to almost wear it in a ponytail. The long flowing brown locks at the time sort of a slight wave to it. Uh, when I wore it out, I got compared to Jesus from time to time because, you know, long brown, wavy hair and a beard and ha <laughs> Jesus. To any conservatives left watching this video, just sort of after saying that Jesus thing, it reminded me of a joke I used to do. Uh, I would I would pull my hair out of the ponytail and, you know, flop it down over my shoulders like, like Jeebus. Um, and I would ask, you know, the, the subject of the joke, the subject receiver of the joke, the person listening to the, the person I'm telling the joke to, I would say, hey, would you like to see my impression of the last miracle of Jesus? And I would say, oh, okay, go for it. So I put my arms out, you know, on the cross. I go, you ready? You ready? Last miracle of Jesus. You like it? Because he was nailed to the cross, so the miracle was he scratched his nose. One of the happiest days of my life is when I made a priest laugh with that joke. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Feel free to steal that joke, by the way. I don't know where I got it from. Did I make it up? Did I copy it from someone? I don't know. I've been telling it for so many years. I've honestly forgotten whether it's mine or someone else's. But feel free to steal it because it is genuinely funny unless you have an enormous stick up your butt. Probably shaped like a crucifix, which might itself be a kink for all I know. I mean, what else are those priests getting up to?